Uh, both headline and core inflation remained moderate in the first quarter of uh, this year, reflecting a stabilizing demand and contained uh, cost uh, pressures. Headline inflation increased slightly to 1.7%. Fourth quarter last year, it was at 1.6%. And this mainly reflects the effects of adjustments to administered prices. Uh, particularly, uh, this included the higher water tariffs and service tax on electricity bills for high consumption users. Nonetheless, this was partly offset by the lower core inflation, uh, which declined to 1.8% during the quarter. During the fourth quarter last year, it was at 2%. And this is largely driven by the continued easing in the food and beverages uh, segment. In 2024, inflation is expected to remain moderate uh, amid stable cost and demand conditions. And for the year as a whole, Headline and core inflation are projected uh, to average 2% to 3.5% and 2% to 3% respectively. Uh, notably, the outlook remains dependent on the implementation of the massive policy on subsidies and price controls, global commodity prices, and financial market developments. And of note, the wider forecast range for headline inflation has incorporated some potential impact from the implementation of fuel subsidy rationalization. On the downside, lower domestic inflation could potentially stem from the weaker than expected global growth conditions. This could manifest both in lower commodity prices as well as lower domestic demand conditions uh, following the weaker external demand. Um, EPF kenakan apa? Account flexible. Adakah uh, dia akan memberi kesan kepada inflasi dan juga pembelanjaan pengguna bila sebab EPF jangka first year pelaksanaan akan 25 billion akan inject to the economy. Question in terms of EPF, uh, uh, if you know that introduction of the country to is actually um, to balance between uh, the future needs in account one and then uh, the capital investment of account two and the country is to really address uh, macam keadaan terdesak the current rainy days needs. So that's the purpose of it. If you look at it, even the account one, the percentage has increased from 70% to 75%. So that, that will encourage people to save more for their retirement. Then we look in terms of the uh, potential impact uh, on inflation. Uh, we believe it's going to be quite minimal. Uh, and of course, uh, this will definitely contribute to some kind of uh, growth. Let's keep the point economy uh, the positive. Dan dari segi uh, impact kata inflasi akan ada kesan tetapi kesan ini minimum based on our uh, jangkaan. Um, I just want to ask, would it be fair to say that as, infl- as long as inflation remains within the forecast range that you gave, you would remain comfortable with keeping the interest rate at 3%? Second, how likely do you see inflation misbehaving this year should the government implement the subsidy reforms for diesel and RON95? And it's on your question in terms of uh, inflation between 2 to 3.5%, so that's our projection for this year. And how does this relate to our monetary policy and OPR? In terms of uh, the considerations for the monetary policy, what we do is that we look at the, um, based on the domestic conditions at the point of time, and we look in terms of what will be the outlook for both inflation and juga growth. So that's where I think the monetary policy will, will, will remain in terms of uh, the focus. And this will be data dependent, and it depends on how many time the MPC meets, what will be the uh, changes that we see in terms of outlook to inflation and also uh, growth. So that's on the monetary policy. And we believe that the current uh, level of growth and inflation and the current level of OPR at 3% is very supportive, is supportive of the economy. Now, in terms of uh, the impact on the um, run 95 and this whole adjustments to, to inflation. I would say that um, we have actually taken into account some of the impact. That's why the range of the inflation to between 2 to 3.5 percent to, to take into consideration some of the adjustments uh, of diesel and also run 95. And um, in terms of um, the assumption that we take is that we take the possible uh, introduction of this uh, policy to be gradual and on the sequence approach, not the one-off approach. That's the assumption that we take. So that's where we came up with the 2 to 3.5%. Uh, and of course, in terms of uh, impact to growth, we can see from two perspectives. 
a short term and also long term. A uh, short term, it may have some impact in terms of uh, consumption and also investment, uh, but this could be mitigated by the uh, cash transfer or the uh, income transfer that the government is uh, thinking. Uh, but the long run impact is that this could be positive for the country uh, because it could help in terms of the fiscal uh, position, and then they will also lead to household spending to be more fuel efficient, which is very positive for the country. And uh, this will also encourage corporates to actually invest in terms of uh, energy efficient production, renewable and sebagainya, which will again create high value uh, job opportunities. So that's in terms of the impact from that we see uh, from the implementation of the uh, subsidization. Uh, we'd like to ask about your opinions in terms of um, what the right timing for government to implement these subsidies, rationalizations, and also in terms of um, and US and Europe are also discussing want to rate cuts in this second half. Well, what's your view of for BNN? Or do you follow the, the pace? Oh, thank you. And then in addition to the question on uh, the EPF account three, as well as uh, subsidy rationalization, uh, does BNM expect any inflationary impact from the 13% salary hike for civil servants? And uh, in addition to the previous question on on the reform subsidy reforms, does BNM have any indicators or expectations of when these reforms will be implemented? As we're already approaching the middle of the year, I think looking at the um, current environment in terms of growth, I think we are experiencing good growth numbers between forty five percent, and with the moderating trend in inflation. We believe this provides a very good opportunity, a very good window opportunity for us to undertake the subsidization and many reform measures. Uh, second, in terms of the um, rate cuts by the US and the Europe, whether we will follow the pace. So, in terms of um, the rate cuts, in terms of our market policy considerations, is that we look at domestic perspective. In terms of what will be the uh, impact, uh, what will be the outlook for growth and uh, price stability over the next couple of quarters moving forward ahead, right? What we'll do is that we only take in terms of what happens globally, for example, the rate cuts in the US or in Europe, we take that in so far as how this will have an impact in terms of our growth outlook and our inflation outlook for Malaysia. So that's how we look at it. But that doesn't mean that we follow the steps that has been taken by any particular country. So that's how we, we uh, that from a positive perspective. Uh, Daniel, your question in terms of the salary of the uh, civil servant, of course the uh, salary adjustment will support the consumption, uh, but this uh, salary adjustment uh, will only happen in December. Uh, so for this year, uh, that should not affect very much in terms of the inflationary uh, pressure or the inflation project that we have. Uh, but it may come in for next year, but based on our um, uh, past experience, we have seen that uh, adjustments in salary has not have a uh, huge impact on inflation. So it will be within the, the expectation. Uh, in terms of um, when the rationalization will be implemented, perhaps I think let's wait for the government uh, to make the relevant announcement on this. And there are a lot of um, matters that needs to be looked at because these are very important decisions. Uh, not only in terms of uh, how do you do it, in terms of uh, the magnitude and the sequencing, more importantly, how do you ensure that there's a fair um, and equitable income transfer uh, to the targeted segments of society. So that's where I think the complexity of it. So perhaps I think that's where we to announce it. What are your thoughts on whether the CPI is still representative of the actual inflation in the country? The question in terms of from Daniel with regard to whether CPI is representative it is certainly representative because it's based on the basket of goods that is uh, commonly being used by the society, by the rakyat. But of course, as I said earlier on, uh, there are, in terms of um, differences of perception with regard to the, um, what do they see as inflation expectation of the, uh, of the public. That is different. But in terms of the uh, numbers itself, CPI does capture in terms of uh, the growth of the prices in Malaysia. 